very large majority of people struggle with motivation when trying to reach their fitness goals. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You start your diet, you, you set a goal to lose some weight, you're a few weeks in and your motivation just just takes a nosedive. You start off all excited, but after a few weeks, something happens and then bam, you're done. Motivation, gone. Bye motivation, bye motivation. So in today's video, I am going to give you my five tips that you can use in a pinch just to keep yourself going. So if you're going through the day and your motivation is like fading and you're just feeling yourself melt into a pile of goop, try one of these five tips and it will it will revive you and it will keep you going. I like to call some of these pre-workout for your brain. So let's go over these little brain pre-workout tips. You're gonna be so motivated after this. But also after my five tips, I do give you a mindset piece of advice that is very, very important to know and remember. So stay till the end for the full benefit of this video. Okay, so tip number one is to have like a list or a calendar with tasks that you want to get done every single day, but they you wanna make them fairly easy to achieve. And the reasoning behind this is to get the momentum going because when you feel like you've achieved something, it, it kind of, it gets you a little bit excited and it helps you keep going. It's when you feel like you're not getting anywhere that you start to lose motivation. So some of some examples of this could be, say you'll, you'll make your list and you'll have, say like getting 7K steps a day, eating a cup of veggies with two of your meals that day, drinking say like two large water bottles, things that, I mean, make them suitable to you. So if you're someone who's currently extremely sedentary and you don't get anywhere near 7K steps, that might not be a super easy small goal. So maybe instead you'll wanna say 5K. So for me, I'll usually go with 7K because typically I'll aim for 10 and then seven is, or like six or seven would be like the minimum. So even if you wanna aim say as eight as your like really, big goal that's hard, then you could just do a little bit less. And then, like I said, then you feel good. Obviously, you just, you still wanna aim for the higher one if you can, but if you feel like you've done something, taken a small step forward, that's going to help you. So, and same thing with the water. Like, I would typically drink more than this, but if you just make it something that's easily achievable, you keep yourself excited, you keep the momentum going. So I like to have some sort of list where I can see all of this, so sometimes it'll be in my in the notes on my phone. I might just have like my own little chart of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I'll just check off if I did each of the things that I set out to do. Or sometimes I'll have like a planner and I'll write it under each day as well, whatever. It honestly varies. Sometimes I feel like seeing it on paper. Sometimes I feel like seeing it in my notes. So whatever works for you, just have some way of recording it because then you can look back on your week and you could be like, well, you know, I did, I did, I did well. I made some improvements. I stuck to my water. Uh, I stuck to my water. I drank my water. I had more veggies. I I took a bunch of steps, so I'm, I'm headed in the right direction. So yeah, that is tip number one. Okay, so tip number two is to have, this is like a very external motivation type thing. So this is to have something to listen to, to fire you up when you're losing motivation. So it could be a video, it could be a podcast, it could be even a song, anything that just inspires you and gets you going. So. For me, I'll listen to people speak that I really admire and look up to. My go-to, my absolute go-to person for this is Gary Vee. Now, he does say that he doesn't want people sitting around watching his motivational videos when they should be working. But what I do is if it's getting, say I wake up at four every day and by the time like, one in the afternoon rolls around, I'm starting to crash a little. So what I'll do is go on a 10 minute walk, I'll listen to a Gary Vee video, and then after the walk, I'm fired up and ready to keep going and just killing it. So 
yeah, it has to be just like something quick, easy. You don't want to be using a motivational video as a form of procrastination. So just something, something that inspires you, something that really just resonates with you. It can really just get you going in the moment. It's not like you listen to a motivational video and you're motivated forever. It is a very temporary, quick thing. But like I said, it can help you get the momentum going. David Goggins is another good one. Super motivating, super intense. Um, he has a book, actually that's for my next point, so shh, I didn't say that. Um, and then Impact Theory is another one. Again, that's kind of not so much, I don't actually really listen to much workout motivation anymore. It's more like entrepreneur motivation because it's hard life. It's freaking hard, but you know, um, that's what works for me. So on to the next point. Um, so this kind of builds, this is very similar. So this is books that motivate you. So I tend to stick to audiobooks because you can do stuff at the same time. So a good one is, it's called Relentless, From Good to Great to Unstoppable, and it's by Tim S. Grover. So he basically just breaks down what it takes to be unstoppable, to just like get shit done. He trained a lot of professional athletes. So in the book, he just tells the story or their stories and relates it to what he's saying. I'm actually I'm not into actual sports, but I still found it super interesting. Like he would be like, oh, you just talk about like the different players and stuff. I it, It's an awesome book. So that's a good one. Um, David Goggins also has a book. It's called Can't Hurt Me. That's also motivating. It's very like, whew, it's intense. Whew. So again, anything. And then if it could be different for you, like maybe it's someone's story who like went through some massive adversity in their fitness challenge or in their fitness journey. Who knows? So yeah, motivational books. Honestly, even, it doesn't even have to be like, like the intention of the book doesn't always have to be motivating. It could just be like a really good book that just kind of fires you up. So, okay, so tip number four is not to get too caught up in the scale. I know for some people, this can be a huge thing to bring down motivation. I've literally had people say, oh, my measurements are smaller, my clothes are loose on me, but my I, but the scale's still the same. What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. Like that is fantastic. And they'll still be like letting that get to their motivation. So if you are somebody like that who get very who gets very caught up in those kind of numbers, do not look at the scale. Do not because again, I've had clients drop. Um, sizes like I have this one client she dropped from medium to a small she lost inches on her waist she's seen some incredible glute progress but meanwhile the scale went up seven pounds and she doesn't care because she knows that she's seen amazing results and no one is gonna go up to her and say oh well you look better but I know that the scale went up so it doesn't count. That's not how it works. So, and honestly, even the same thing with measurements. That is why I stopped measuring myself years ago because if I took a measurement or a weight and I, it wasn't what I wanted to see, it would make me so upset that I would fall off track. I wouldn't intentionally give up. I'd be like, but I would just be so upset that then I would keep falling off. So again, if that's something that happens to you, don't do it, just take the journey slower, go by pictures, go how you're feeling, go by how clothes fit, and that's better if it's gonna keep it more stress-free. On that note though, I did want to mention too, it's also very important to remember that progress isn't linear because again, if some people, if you're starting to see results and then you, you find you're stalling or maybe even slightly regressing, that could just make them so upset to the point that again, motivation, gone. And again, remember that progress isn't linear, so it is okay if that happens. There's going to be ups and downs in your journey. It takes a long time to see results. People don't realize, like in the grand scheme of things, eight weeks, that is short. That is short. So you really have to remember that you got to be in this for the long haul if you want to make a long-term sustainable change. So that kind of, again, that ties into motivation just because like I've been saying, if you're kind of getting down on yourself, that does not help with motivation. So just know that all of these struggles are so, so normal and don't let them discourage you. Okay, so tip number five is also another very external kind of goal and that is just to have 
there's a couple different things. So it could be having a picture on hand of something that motivates you. It could be, say, somebody's before and after picture that really inspires you. It could be not even necessarily before and after picture, just a picture that inspires you. It could be, say, if you're going on a trip, maybe it could be like a picture of that destination. So you could put these, like, say, as your phone screen. You could just um, keep the pictures around somewhere where you'll see them. You could even just have like post-it notes around your house with like a gold date. Like say if you have a trip, you could put the date of the trip. Just like things like that. And this is not actually a common statement for me to say because typically I say like, don't focus on the short term. Don't just be like, oh, I need to be lean by this date of my trip. But if it is something that's kind of gonna keep the momentum going and keep you motivated, then that is okay. Just, you'll have to just keep finding something. Cause if a post-it note with the date of your trip is the, is what's keeping you motivated, obviously you still wanna keep going after the trip. So you'll just have to implement other techniques. I think I've seen before too, people will have like sticky notes on food that they don't wanna eat. Like say the sticky note, it'll be like, oh, don't forget about your trip to uh, Italy. Don't forget about your trip to Cuba or something. And then you're just like, ah. So I've never actually done that, but because honestly for me in the moment, I'd be like, fuck that, I want the freaking food. But <laughs> it works for some people, so. <laughs> that is all five of my tips. So like I've mentioned a few point times in this video, those are all, most of those are fairly external. I think at the end of the day, you, you gotta have a very strong why behind your goals. You can't just be like, oh, I wanna lose weight because I want abs, end of story. Think about how it impacts the rest of your life. Like again, it's gonna vary from situation to situation. So say maybe somebody with kids who's struggling with their weight will say like, I wanna lose weight and get healthy so I can be around for my kids and my family. Like that's friggin' motivating. That's like a big deal. Or it could be maybe like your job requires you to be kind of active and healthy and feeling your best. And there's a quote and it's like, you can't, give, I don't, I think I'm fucking it up, but you can't give on an empty cup. Like if you're feeling like shit, you can't help other people. So like maybe you're like a teacher or something. And again, if you're feeling like really low energy and really crappy about your health and your weight, you're not going to be able to impact the people you're trying to help as well as you could. I know for me, even as um like as a coach and a trainer, when I I mean, obviously you, you, you kind of want to be in shape because you're going to practice what you preach. But when I struggled a lot with binge eating, it was I was I was still working in the fitness industry at first. And I know that it really did bring down the quality of my work because I felt sluggish and lethargic. And I felt very insecure because my confidence was so low because of my binging struggles. Again, I couldn't help people as much as I can now because I just wasn't my best self. So think about that too. There's more people involved in this goal than just you and looking good, it can affect the people around you and your career, whatever, your family, just whatever is important to you. So remember that too. That's kind of like the core thing to remember. And then the tips are kind of just like the little things to kind of keep you going in the moment. So I hope that helped. Like and comment if you enjoyed this video and let me know if you have any motivation-y little tips that you do that I didn't mention because we always all need more motivation tips. And that is it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I ended this video so awkwardly. <laughs> Bye! Bye!